Okay, well, uh, Arvind Sangur is now joining us, managing partner of Geosphere Capital Management. Arvind, good to have you with us here. Thanks very much for your time. Uh, will the next big move or biggish kind of move come from uh, the U.S.? Uh, because it's been a very narrow uh, rally, either that broadens out or we see a meaningful pullback. You think uh, either of those two will out, uh, pan out or you think we'll get, uh, you know, we'll continue in the fashion that we have for most of this year? I think, look, uh, the U.S. had a, had a strong rally in the first quarter. Uh, the, the tech stocks even, and NASDAQ even more than the S&P. And, you know, second quarter has been a little bit uh, uh, less strong, but still, you know, I think the markets are kind of in this confused state uh, because uh, there is the hope that Goldilocks, Fed has paused, inflation will come down uh, naturally, and they may just have to do one more in, in July and they'll be done. That's the, you know, Goldilocks scenario. The, the negative scenario that has now started to come to the fore is if you look at the inflation data that came out of uh, the UK last week, uh, and the fact that the you know uh, uh, that the central bank uh, uh, Bank of England had to do 50 basis points surprisingly uh, to to fight inflation, and you know European inflation too seems somewhat more persistent. Uh, the concern is that you know if the US has the same uh, persistence of inflation then, uh, you know, Goldilocks may not be possible and Fed may have to keep uh, slamming on the brakes uh, till, the, till something uh, breaks, no pun intended. So, you know, that's, that's the negative. So the market, I think, is, you know, has had a good rally. At this point, we need greater clarity on how the inflation versus, uh, you know, Fed uh, aggressiveness is going to play out and the economic fundamentals. So far, the economic fundamentals are holding up uh, a lot better uh, than many of us expected with the kind of rate increases that the Fed has done so far. Mm. So in a bit of a tug of war, which is creating that confused state. But I think come July, uh, Arvind, uh, we'll get the earnings season in the United States and even back home in India. And then we'll have a greater picture of how the second half of the year is going to pan out. But, uh, you know, talking about India, uh, the overarching theme in the last two months has been the slew of block deals, the sales by promoters or large marquee investors in company. Every single day we are hearing of a block deal where a large chunk has been offloaded by an investor or a promoter. It's been lapped up, uh, you know, aggressively. But nonetheless, this has been a big trend. Uh, how would you read it? Uh, I don't read it too negatively. Obviously, you know, when insiders are selling, uh, you can always assume that they know something that we don't. Uh, but I think they're just being prudent because they're also seeing uh, the global uncertainty and therefore taking a little bit of chips off the table. So, I mean, I think uh, clearly it's never positive, let's be clear. Uh, but is it an overwhelming negative that they know something bad is coming? I don't think so. I think uh, the real issue for India is going to be, uh, look, the monsoons are off to a bad start. Is inflation going to reappear? And if inflation is going to reappear, is the market too sanguine uh, about the rate cycle, about uh, uh, the inflation outlook, and, and therefore, could you see RBI having to go back, uh, you know, to raising rates again? There, there are some uncertainties that are India, India specific uh, that we have to worry about. But you know, uh, outside of that monsoon fear, uh, I think uh, the economic fundamentals in India, certainly for the you know uh, June quarter earnings, are very solid, uh, and uh, hopefully, if inflation does not uh, play, you know, a spoiler. Uh, then, uh, you know, the rest of the year should uh, should continue to look good. All right. Hi, Arvind. Good morning. Arvind, what are you factoring in uh, in terms of action from the Fed? Uh, the golden act scenario will be that they do one more rate hike and then they, uh, you know, pause. But what are you factoring? you think they will do one more and that's it? Uh, I, uh, you know, it's so data dependent. I, I definitely think that, uh, the, you know, July is leaning towards doing a rate hike, but there's some data that comes out between now and the July Fed meeting, that'll, that could swing it if there's a big surprise. Uh, but my assumption is we get a 25 basis point uh, Fed hike in July. After that, uh, Microsoft, while like most other observers, is fuzzy. Uh, my fear is that you know this inflation does not go away gently into the night and that without a meaningful economic slowdown, inflation is not going to go away. So I'm frankly still not a believer in Goldilocks. So my expectation is either the economy is going to you know, uh, have some serious problems or the Fed is going to have to keep going because while the good side inflation has been under control, the services side inflation, I think, is going to prove to be 
far stickier. And, and that's why my, my concern is uh, that Fed might have to go one or two more times, be, uh, including July, and, and that could put the economy at risk. Mm. In, in this kind of uh, scenario which you're pointing out, and you earlier well, kind of refer to the fact that, well, uh, markets are in a confused state of mind, uh, can uh, the Indian market is pretty much at all-time highs, right? Uh, and, for example, we had Jonathan Garner or Morgan Stanley saying that emerging markets, Asian emerging markets are largely in a, uh, in, in, in a bull market. I mean, technically speaking, they're off some 25% from last October lows. Uh, can they continue to do very well, especially India, Arvind? Do you have a firm view? Yeah, I think, uh, I think uh, again, uh, I, I, I'm watching the inflation data closely. That can be a near-term negative. It doesn't fundamentally change the story. I think the fundamental story of India still looks very solid to us. Uh, and, you know, markets will, uh, will, will you know, uh, trade around a little bit. But I think uh, if I'll take a, you know, uh, between now and the end of the fiscal year or two or three-year view, I feel quite comfortable that Indian markets have solid tailwinds because they're one of the best growth stories in the world. Uh, and I think that growth uh, is, it has solid underpinnings uh, that, uh, that are less dependent. They're not independent, but they're less dependent on, you know, a minor inflation in the West. And that's what my, my expectation in the West is, is if we do get a, I'm sorry, minor recession in the West. And that's my assumption that if they do get a recession, uh, which I think is still uh, a, a high probability, uh, that's going to be a mild recession. And the Indian markets, therefore, growth is one of the better ones because it's much more domestically driven, uh, where its growth on a relative basis will be better. And some of those recession risks are reflected in Indian IT and other export-oriented companies. So I think we're, uh, we're in better shape in India than, uh, than many other uh, markets around the world. Arvind, thank you very much uh, for joining in. Look forward to a chat another day. Enjoy the rest of your day. Get into Thank a you. break. Uh, on the other side, our list of top stocks is lined up next.